Hello and welcome to this installment of Let's Learn Ruby. We will continue to learn about object-oriented programming, and specifically we'll learn about instance and class variables and methods. So, let's get right into it. If you remember from last time, we created a dog object in the variable dog1 from the class dog and gave the dog object a name of Fido and an age of 2. Now if you want to speak in proper terms, we say that dog1 is an instance of the class dog. Just how, just like how you and me are instances of a human, we can say that an instance can be roughly defined or it's just a nerd word meaning a single object. So it's a, a common way of saying that we created an object is that we created an instance of some class. So for example, uh, to drive the point home, let's create another object, call him dog2. Uh, let's name him Baxter. I'm going to be an older dog of age 9. And we just say we created another instance of the class dog. So we can say that dog2 is another instance of the class dog. So let me modify the put statement so we can uh, be more descriptive in the command prompt. So I modified our put statement. So now let's just print this guy out into the command line, or run this guy into the command line. And we see that Fido is two years old and that Baxter is nine years old. Now the reason why I bring up this term instance is because as we learned from the previous time, we created instance variables up here through the attribute accessor method. <clears throat> and what instance variables can be defined as, as that they are variables that are dependent or specific or tied to a specific object. For example, each dog object that create we create has a distinct name and a distinct age that is tied to the specific dog object. This dog1 object has a name of Fido and an age of two. So instance variables are tied to a specific object. In this way, instance variables are also called uh, object level variables. What we've also done here is create instance methods and this is how they're defined. But we can't really see why they're instance methods, why they're tied to a particular object of a class. So let's write another method that'll show, an instance method that'll show this behavior. So let's create a method called fetch ball. And what this will do is cause the dog to fetch the ball depending on its age. So if the dog is, if the dog's age is, um, let's say, less than six, then that particular dog will, since it's young and exuberant and full of energy, will, it'll run excitedly to get the ball. Whereas if the dog is older than six, then we'll say that it's an older dog and that it's It'll, since it's old, it'll just slowly get the ball. It's in no rush. It knows what the game the fetch is about. So it'll slowly walk towards the ball to get the ball. That is depending on the age of this, the dog object, depending on a specific state that the object is in, this instance method will, be dec uh, will have different executions. To illustrate this, let's have both dog fetch the ball. Let's have dog1 object, that is Fido, fetch the ball, and let's have Baxter also fetch the ball. So let's save this and then print or run this guy into the command line and see what happens. And there, since Fido is only two years old, he'll run excitedly to get the ball, but Baxter is nine years old, so he'll slowly walk to get the ball. And we see that depending on the state of the current, of the specific object uh, that this method will tie, is tied to, then it'll execute different actions. So an instance method is dependent on the uh, object it is tied to, on the current state of the object it's tied to. And just to give a visual representation, we have created our class dog, and from that we created two dog instances, dog1 and dog2, Fido and Baxter. So, yeah. 
So to sort of summarize what we've learned so far about instance variables and methods, we know that they are dependent on or tied to a specific object of a class. We can consider instance variables and methods as object level variables and methods. That is, each object has their own distinct copy of instance variables and methods. And instance variables are denoted with the at sign. And instance methods are written in the regular way one writes methods, except that they are inside um, a class block. Sometimes we don't want variables or methods to be so rigid, to be so dependent or tied to a specific object of a class. Sometimes we want these variables and methods to have more freedom, to be more lenient, to be more general purpose so that we may have more functionality to do things. Um, one of these types of variables or methods with a sense of more general purpose is class variables and methods. And before I get to the bullet point, let's learn by example and go back to the dog class that we created. Uh, here we go. Now this file is getting pretty cramped, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is cut these guys out and put them into another file so that we can run this file separately. So let's call this execution file dot rb. Let's go ahead and require the Ruby dog class. And let's move him into another view. And let's try to run this guy. Ruby execution file. Boom. We're good. OK. So let's say we created this dog class because we love dogs. We want to keep uh, a track of the name and age of all the dogs that we have. But we also want to keep track of the total number of dogs that we have. Uh, we can't do that with the current way the class is written. So let's go ahead and make a variable up top here uh, called a total number of dogs. Now we know we can't make a local variable because Ruby doesn't accept local variables in classes. But we also can't have an instance variable because we can't have a total number of dogs tied to one specific dog object. So what we'll need is to go out a sco a one more level in scope and create a class variable. And what this will do is it'll keep track of the total number of dogs that are in the class of dog. So this is the way class variables are written. It has two at symbols as opposed to one of the instance method, as uh, followed by the name of the variable. So this is the class variable. And let's go ahead and also create our first class method. And the way we write a class method is very similar to the way we write instance methods. However, one small but significant difference. We have, uh, so we construct our method, or we define a method name, let's call it get total number of dogs and then by doing this method we can get the total number of dogs and then we've just created an instance method here but in order to make it a class method all we have to do is add this uh, syntax and it's the self dot get total number of dogs so the way we write class variables is just by adding a self dot before the method name and I don't want to get into too much detail right now about self since there's a lot of dig in. But what it basically is, is that it's a reference to the current objects that we're in. And right now we're in the object of the class dog. So this self refers to the class of dog. Uh, that might sound a little trippy, but uh, just know that whenever you want to declare a class variable, you declare a class variable using the self operator within a cl the class itself. So all this method is going to do is return to us the total number of dogs. So let's go ahead and call him. And the way that you call a class method is by giving the name of the class followed by the name of the class method. This is opposed to calling an instance method right here that we have here. Uh, which is called from a specific object, a specific instance of the class. Class methods are called uh, from, the ob uh, from the class itself. <clears throat> so we're calling the total number of dogs that we have so far. So let's put that in a put statement, and we'll say the total number of dogs so far is, and then wrap this guy up with string interpolation. And now let's go ahead and run this guy, this execution file. 
So let's open up the command prompt to run this guy. And we have, let's run that command. And Ruby yells at us because we haven't initialized the class variable yet, which makes sense because we, whenever we have a class variable, we don't, we don't ever initialize the class variable in this initialize method. So we have to initialize them up here. So for the sake of this example, let's initialize this class variable to zero and check back into Ruby and see if that works. And there you go. Now the total number of dogs so far is zero, which is incorrect because we have two dogs. In order to increment the total number of dogs whenever we create or get a new dog, we'll have to increment the total number of dogs in the initialize method. So let's go ahead and increase, increment the total number of dogs by one every time we create or initialize a new dog. And if we save both these files again and run him in Ruby, we should get the correct number of dogs. So there you go. So yeah, every time we create a new dog, we'll get uh, the total number of dogs will increase because it'll go into this initialize method. So if we create more dogs, dog three, dog new, jacks, age four, dog four, Bogart, So if we add two more new dogs here and we go ahead and run this guy, we'll see that our total number of dogs has been incremented up to four. So we have created for ourselves a class method and a class variable. Going back to our visual, we have our dog class and our two dog instances, but this time we also have our class variable and our class method inside the, uh, the dog class. So to recap everything we learned about class variables and methods, we know that they're independent of any object of a class, and we know that class methods can be called directly from a class by first providing the class name, then dot, then providing the name of the, uh, the class method. And we know that class variables are denoted with a double at sign, and we know that cla class methods are denoted with the self keyword, and then providing the class method name and uh, the functionality of that method. So to compare between the use of instance and class variables and methods, usually you'd want to use instance variables and methods when you want to relate logic to a specific instance of a class, such as if you want specific attributes and behaviors to a specific object, like the name and age of a dog. And you'd want to use, in general, class methods and variables when there's logic that doesn't operate on a specific instance, when you want more freedom, more, more, a more general uh, functionality, such as when we wanted to know the total number of dogs in our dog class. And that's all we've got for today. Thank you for wanting to learn, and I'll see you all in the next one.